down now. Hey guys, in today's video, we're going to retry making the Scream 6 mask with a few new methods. Let's get into it. So before we begin, I just want to give a quick shout out to 713Ghostface for a few of the methods I will be using during this video. I did watch his tutorial and it just came out really, really good. I wanted to give it a try for myself. So I will be using this wood burning tool that he did recommend using for the cracks, as well as this E6000 in black for some color and texture. And hopefully all goes well. So now we can move on to our supply list. So our canvas for today will be this UA EU mask. If you guys are looking for some EU masks at an amazing, unbeatable price, be sure to follow and message me on Instagram for the link. So now we're going to move on to the paints that we're going to be using. These are literally 50 cent acrylics from Walmart. Shouldn't break the bank. The thing that it was most expensive out of all these supplies would probably be the wood burning tool, but that was even 15 bucks. So not too expensive and again you're going to be able to reuse it as many times as you need to so without further ado here are the paints i'm going to be using snow white it's a matte snow white literally 50 cents king's gold matte as well 50 cents black matte 50 cents pewter gray again 50 cents i'm not going to say it again satin classic caramel there it is e6000 in black now there is a clear transparent version of this but the black one could definitely come in handy for this project considering that it'll shine through the whites and all the other colors that we do and add more to the aged look. If you do go with clear, it'll still work for texture, but the black will definitely make a difference. The last thing would be this wood burning tool. This will melt into the vinyl to help make our cracks and then we can still add finishing touches to those cracks. And you know, since it is deeper into the mask, some of the color will stay in there where we want it to. If we don't want it to, we can always paint over it. But again, this will definitely be very, very important. I'd say the last thing we maybe need is just some water. This is some distilled water in a spray bottle just for when we want to water down some of the acrylic for some of the washes we'll be doing. Without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so now we have our mask laid out. We're going to start with our black E6000 for some texture. It is best to use some protection for your hands, such as some latex gloves. If you're allergic to latex, of course, you want to use something else just as long as it doesn't get stuck to your hands and you don't risk getting it in your eyes or just maybe stuck to the cabinet next to you. So as recommended by 713 Ghostface, one pass of the black E6000 is the perfect amount. So that's what we're gonna do now. Okay, so there it is. One pass of black E6000 all around the mask. Of course, I did put a little bit more in sections where I know there's more damage on the mask such as the upper right eye area and the lower left side of the mouth right there. So now we're going to move on to our second step of adding some white acrylic paint, dabbing it on with a napkin to leave some of that black showing through for that aged look that we're going for. So we'll get to that now. So as you can see, I did my layer of white and made sure to dab enough that you can see some of the black through it and now it gives it more of a layered look and that's exactly what we want. I did of course get some on the mouth and I feel like that might get in the way later, but I will try to find a way to get that off. The next step will probably be adding in some of those yellows and browns and we'll get to that in a second. For right now, I'm just gonna try and fix this a little bit, add a little bit more to this chin part and then we'll get to the next step. All right, so I did go over the mouth with some black acrylic just to get rid of that ugly white that was left over from the last step. But we're gonna continue with a classic caramel to add some of that weathering effect. So I do have a cup of some water and um, our classic caramel. So we're gonna get our brush. I'm going to be using, again, this little soft makeup brush. I don't know if it makes that much of a difference. I will have a napkin ready to dab away some of it. So we're gonna dip into our brownish color dip into some water so it's not too heavy. It's a lot more watered down. I'm gonna lightly dab onto this napkin to get rid of a lot of the excess. And I'm gonna get ready to use it for when we're gonna start wiping it away from here. So I'm gonna brush some in right there. Right there. And then we're gonna quickly dab away Now I'm looking at it, I think it did water it down a bit much, so definitely don't want to do that again. I'm going to add a little bit more of a classic caramel to our brush. Lightly dab it in the water, 
Love you tapping on your napkin. And we're gonna go put some of it. It'll look really dark right now, but again, it is a process. So we're gonna start dabbing it on there lightly. And then we're gonna start dabbing it with our napkin to get rid of a lot of it. So it just leaves some of that stain behind onto the white, maybe a little bit more. Dab it away. As you can see, it is leaving some of that brown color behind, but not really like sharp. It's just like very soft and light on there. And that's exactly what we want. It's just a lot of layering to get that aged look. I still think that my brush is a bit too wet. So I'm gonna try and dry it off a little bit and continue doing this. I think that's looking a lot better like that. I don't want it to be too harsh because then if it's too harsh, it looks a little bit cartoonish. Of course, that's not what we want. We're gonna keep doing our layers little by little. So let's continue with that. Keep going, brushing more out there. And again, dabbing it off. I think I'm doing it too lightly, so I'm gonna probably just do a lot less water because it's not leaving too much of that wash that we want behind. So I'm gonna make it a lot more paint than water. It's a little bit better thing there but not too much just how we like again you can choose where you want it to be the most yellow but for me I'm going to go mostly around the edges of the eyes I just want to make sure I add a good amount of yellow where it's noticeable but it's also not too much and go around the eyes here on this area dab it off leave some of that yellow there looks really nice already it's starting to look pretty good I'm gonna go and do this side, nice and yellowish, not overdone, perfect. Go down the center of the eyes. I'm gonna try this, see how it looks. We're gonna go under this eye also. That looks pretty good. So far, I have some yellow going on. I think it actually looks pretty good. So we're gonna move on to our next color. We're gonna be using some of this yellow. We're gonna be doing, of course, some of the same areas, but maybe also somewhere here at the top to add a little bit of color difference between some of that brownish color and yellow. And hopefully that works well for us. So let's continue. I don't really mind using this brush again for this next color, because again, it all like is closer to a yellow color anyway, so I think it'll still work. So me personally, I love the scenes where the mask looks more of a yellow than blue in like the convenience store scene, for example. Um, so I will try to do a little bit more yellow around the mask to make it obviously have that orangish kind of yellow tint to it overall and hopefully that works well for me so yeah we'll continue working on the top of the forehead here and dab it away and i made it a little dark so hopefully it doesn't look overdone in a second adding some more classic caramel some water So there it is. I think it looks pretty good so far for being my first attempt at trying it with this new method. I think it looks really good. Again, shout out 713 Ghostface for this. I really do appreciate the ideas. It looks great so far. So we're going to continue with adding a little bit more yellow and then we should be able to move on to the cracks. So our next step will be using the wood burning tool. I'm gonna to be using two different pictures for reference to hopefully make it as accurate to the movie as possible. I'll put this on screen for you guys. 
And um, again, this is my first time using this tool, so hopefully all goes well. Let's get to it. So for our next step, we're gonna use a really fine brush as well as some black acrylic to do these cracks. We're gonna fill them in a little bit. This will be very tedious, so I will probably do maybe two of them here on camera, and then I'll just skip to when I believe I'm done with the section so we can move on to the next step. So as you can see, we filled in those cracks with some black acrylic, but it is a bit harsh. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna water down some white acrylic, brush over it, and then dab it away as we go along and hopefully leave some of that black shining through, but not too much to where it looks cartoonish the way it does now. So we're gonna do that next and I'll skip to when I'm done with that. Just a quick demonstration. I'm gonna do it right here on these cracks and hopefully it goes well. So I'm dipping it in some white acrylic, watering it down a little bit. I'm gonna brush over it lightly you want it to be watery, you don't want it to be super thick, so it's just solid white, because obviously it's going to show way more white than black, and then it's just going to be solid white instead of solid black. It's going to look terrible, so you want to water it down to where some of that black shows through, but not all of it, so it's like a perfect balance. That's exactly what we want right there. So here on the eye areas, I did some white, but it did turn out to look a little too white, so I basically did the exact same thing, but with some gray, and I think it turned out pretty good where you can see those cracks in there, but they're not super solid black and a little too cartoonish. So the next step is going to be painting in those forehead cracks or damage with some gray paint so we can fill them in and make them dark. Let's go on to that. So I think I'm going to consider the mask finished at this point. I think it looks pretty good. It's at least to my liking. The only thing I probably could have done a little bit better would maybe be the cracks with the wood burning tool. Again, it was my first time using it. So I was a little lost and I think I made them a little too wide. So maybe in the next attempt, I'll be able to do it a little bit better. But for now, I will make the closing of the video so you guys can see it a little bit better. So there it is, our finished Scream 6 mask. Thanks to the ideas from 713 Ghostface. This definitely came out a lot better than my last attempt. And without his help, it would not have come out like this. I will be leaving a link down below to his channel so you guys can go subscribe to him and check out his video. I'm sure he explains it a lot better than I do. I just wanted to follow along and see how well it came out. There's a very specific reason I made this video because the next video is going to be something really awesome. I'm very excited for it. So stay tuned, subscribe, like, comment, all of that. I'll be getting back to everyone as soon as I can. Any and all support to the channel is greatly appreciated. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.